Next week, Farm Week will begin its 41st season. That's over 2,000 shows. So it's only natural that in four decades of covering Mississippi agriculture, sometimes you're bound to visit the same farm more than once. Well, that's what happened this time. And 20 years later, the owners are not only surviving, but thriving. Here's the story of one South Mississippi cattle ranch that's been able to remain successful by changing with the times and keeping it all in the family. Leighton Spann and I had originally been invited to Rogers Bar HR Ranch to cover a different assignment. But as we were approaching the gates, he said to me, You know, I think I've been here before, like 20 years ago. It was in the summer of 1997 that Farm Week was last here. Back then, Rogers Bar HR was headed up by Dr. Harlan Rogers, a retired dentist turned grass farmer. Sure, the ranch still had cattle, but Farm Week was on the scene to learn how Dr. Rogers' management of Marshall ryegrass and rotational grazing was making his pasture one of the best in the nation. Fast forward 20 years, and our cameras are a lot better, but the entrance hasn't changed. Neither has the Rogers name. But the way the farm operates is much different. You'll still find acres of lush pasture, but the beautiful white Charlet cattle is what's taking center stage these days. Our Charlet bull, bulls outdo every breed there, so we've been real pleased about that. Harlan's son Doug owns the farm now. He was the ranch manager when Farm Week first came around. You know, I look at cattle every day, it just when you had you know, 80 acres and you just threw your cows out, you needed to see them maybe once a week or something like that. Now this West Point grad turned beef extraordinaire spends his days sharing in his knowledge of Charlet. Charlet cattle uh, were, were imported from France. They're, they're a white breed uh, in color and what they do is they grow real fast and they put on uh, weight efficiently. They take, uh, it takes fewer pounds to put on a pound of beef with Charlet than any other breed. We're the largest Charlet ranch in the southeast. To find more Charlet cattle, you'd have to go to Montana. It's not a distinction that happened overnight. Harlan already had a plan for his animals back in 1997, and he wasn't shy to share it with us. It's no secret I've been wanting the best purebred Charlet herd in the United States, and probably thus the world. Just, and we're well on our way to that objective, and we intend to reach it. And we've had the top bulls off there for the years. The wall outside Doug's office is proof he's been honoring his late father's wishes. Cattle from the ranch have graced the cover of the Charlet Journal. The farm was honored with the Beef Improvement Federation's Pioneer Award. Harlan and his wife Dorothy Ann were even inducted into the American International Charlet Association Hall of Fame. What's really special about the, this, this operation is how the family's involved in it so closely and how they've diversified their, their family's operation so they can take advantage of, of all of the ups and downs in the markets and, and have an opportunity to, to have a sustainable long-term term business. It's a great representative of, uh, of Mississippi agriculture and Mississippi animal agriculture. I think the most important thing is feed efficiency, is get the pounds on with less feed you know, when they ship them to the feedlots, or less input costs. That's the thing that's going to save this industry, is less input costs. Low-cost producers always survive. Another thing that sets the Rogers farm apart is its longevity. Doug's grandfather started the ranch in the 1920s with five cows and 15 acres. Roughly 90 years and 2,500 acres later, a fifth generation is helping to ensure there's no slowing down. Doug's niece Shannon, her husband Levi, and their son Rhett are seeing to that. Lo and behold, I met my husband uh, in college, and he was a cattle farmer and just kind of slowly roped me into the business, and now I do all of his bookkeeping, and I have an animal health store, and um, it's just been an incredible um, journey, really. Now we have a little boy, and he's got this genetic defect of loving cattle and wanting to be around them all the time, so it's, um, it's really a dream come true. It's a testament to the hard work and planning of the Rogers clan, but also to the Magnolia State's natural land. Well, Mississippi's a great place to raise cattle. We have an environment 
uh, relatively consistent rainfall, um, really high quality forage is a good part of the year. The challenges with any commodity type business is pricing and fluctuations in, in those prices and that's probably the biggest challenge our producers face is, is that variation in price year over year. Um, but the producers in Mississippi are relatively progressive. Um, they, they use modern technologies, modern techniques, modern genetics, and produce a very high quality animal. So I think the future of beef production in Mississippi is very bright. Doug and his family are grabbing the proverbial bull by the horns to take on the challenge. And at this rate, in another 20 years, Farmwig will be back again. But if Doug has anything to say about it, we won't be here doing another grass story. After all, it's his least favorite part of the cattle industry. Because it's just a, it's labor intense and it's machinery intense. I just, I don't particularly like machinery. The least amount of equipment you can own, the better off you are. From Collins, Mississippi, I'm Troy Moling. 20 years ago, can you believe it? And I was there for both of them. You sure were. <laughs> Thanks for your help with that story. And get this, if you want to see the original story from 1997, we've posted that on the Farm Week Facebook page.